Welcome back. Today we're flying out the MiG-3. It's a very low BR plane. Yes, but it will teach us some valuable lessons about B. Today we're going to be out turning people without having any turn rate. Because the MiG-3 is one of the worst turning props. And especially considering you're fighting planes like biplanes, planes like the P-36. You're at a very considerable disadvantage when it comes to turn rate. But you have some engine power and you got the air spawn. So you have to use that. And we're going to be looking at some energy fighting today. If it wasn't clear enough, and if you don't know how to energy fight, I will have a link down below for a guide to that. Starting off, we got a J20. Very nimble plane, but he doesn't have the most amount of uh, engine power. And we start off cutting directly inside of his loop. And it could have ended right here. I'm glad it didn't. And look at my turn rate. This is full pull. It does not move whatsoever. So I need to be careful here, and I need to take it slow. The fight after this will be against the key 43. So... You can imagine that that's very fun to fight as well. And the plane that doesn't really turn well. So we're extending away from the J-20. He can't really touch me. So I'm just going to pitch back up here. Get rid of the B-36. Get a few hits in. Don't actually kill him. But I think both his engines are out. So he should crash eventually. We start going horizontal here. I don't have to dive on him. I don't need to pick up speed. I want to gain separation. Not close the gap. And I'm going horizontal here because I'm not going very fast. But because I'm directly above him. If you go horizontal we have to go horizontal. But he also has to pitch up if he wants to get a shot on me. And he's trying to do so. And he's trying to get the shot in. Barely get the shot. And back up we go. And this is the reason why I have been playing this plane. Because well the guns aren't very good. So I can't rely on having good aim. And killing them in one pass. Which makes it so that I have to play it much more safe. And when I'm telling you guys to, to do something or how to do something, it's probably in your best interest if I don't kill them in a single pass. Because this fight could have ended right there. And I know that a lot of people might even miss the pass or do something wrong. It doesn't kill them, your guns don't work. That all happens. So I think flying a plane like this, which is kind of ass when it comes to turning as well as not having very good guns. I can show you how you can play this relatively safe and get multiple passes despite the enemy being... Quite a bit more maneuverable than you. All you need is some engine power. And they won't be able to ever hit you. So we're going a little bit faster now. We're going about 300 kph. 350. And we can see that when we're both level out. I'm gaining a lot of distance here. And I'm flying directly away from him. Just to, to see what the energy difference is. And I'm going to put it again in a very slight climb. I just do that thing where I flat out. We fly directly away from each other. So I can measure the energy. Because then... We're both at, a, at the same trajectory. So he won't gain on me because he's cutting me off. Right now I'm going into a very slight bank. I'm going to spiral up. If he tries to follow this he will not be able to catch me. I have a lot more energy. He's slightly below me. And my engine power is better as well. So I might not turn as well as he does. But he has no business trying to pitch up for me. Because he simply doesn't have the energy. We pull back in. Get a crit in. It doesn't say what it is. So I'm going to assume it's absolutely nothing. He's going to get behind me instantly again. Look at that turn rate. But it doesn't matter. Because I go 450 kilometers an hour now. He's going to start spraying at me. And we're going to be doing the exact same thing. We go in a very slight climb. Just to get some separation up. And now he has enough. He's, he has had enough. And he goes directly back to his airfield. We of course do not comply with that. And we're going to kill him regardless. I pretend to break off. Maybe he will follow. He seems to be taking the bait. And now he won't have enough speed. Or altitude to dive towards his airfield. Big mistake on his end. But thanks for doing that. Because now I can very easily kill you. We proceed with the chase. And we're on the 6 now with a lot more energy. And he tries to turn out of my guns. And he manages to do so. But unfortunately for him. I shoot his entire tail off. And he's going to go directly into a tree. For the fight after this one, we have a Key 43 and it's also a very dangerous plane. Also the plane I did a video on the other day. Of course this one has a lot less engine power and it doesn't have 20 mils. But the same principle still applies. We just start shooting from some range. We go head on. He doesn't want to take the head on. Very good call on his end. He's going to go down. So I go up. And if he tries to follow me now, he will bleed a lot of speed doing so. But I do want to be careful because that thing does not stall. It's an actual helicopter. So I don't want to get... Within a kilometer. Unless he's almost stalling out. We go straight up. We get some separation in. Then we go horizontal to not stall out. Because when you stall out you become a very easy target. He's going to dive out. Pick up some speed to be more maneuverable. And it becomes very hard for me to hit him. 
only hit a few uh, she cast rounds don't really do any damage and he's gonna be pulling directly onto my six again making it so that I have to yet again extend away and it's the same thing over and over again we put it into a slight climb we're going to use the retention that we have gonna use the energy generation that we have because we have a better climb rate especially at higher speeds because his his top speed is very very low so the faster we go uh, the more relative speed that i pick up because my uh, top speed in the end is higher we do the same thing we go horizontal at the top of our loop because we don't want to stall out directly drop the landing flaps try to delay the stall as long as possible because if he tries to pitch up for me then i will be easily going head on with him I notice that we're gonna go head on. He dodges it just as well as I do, which is a good thing. Because you don't want to go head on when your boat stalled out. It's simply a waste, uh, especially for me. I have a lot more energy. He could have taken it, because for him it's a last ditch effort. The thing is, the Key 43 isn't very durable. I have a Brezen in the nose, and uh, he only has those uh, Japanese MGs. So the chances of him losing that are very, very high. And we do the same thing. We go up. We go horizontal, we try to maintain our speed and we try to maintain our altitude so that when he comes up to us, we can pounce back down when he starts stalling out. Problem is, the key 43 doesn't really stall out and uh, what's happening here is he, he tried to pitch up too long but even though he doesn't stall out, he's not going to have the energy here to pitch up for me so I cut my throttle to cut a little bit of that uh, turn time off at the top of the stall. He's in my guns. And there he goes. Alright, we got the 1v1s out of the way. Now, what do you do when there's two people that turn a lot better than you? Yes, I know it's low tier and most of these people aren't very proficient at flying. But it gets the point across. And if you really struggle with energy fighting, this is one of the best planes to learn it in. Because you don't get this instant gratification, one pass kill. You don't get any turn and you really have to use your, uh, what what's it called? Your energy, you can't use anything else because this plane doesn't have anything else. So, we go 600 here. I'm going to be cutting in behind this guy just to get the position out. He turns just in time and you can tell that I just don't have any turn rate whatsoever. And now, I'm a little bit of the back foot because I have two guys on my six. One is crit, but he's not really crit that badly. And I'm really just using the uh, the altitude here, the, the air spawn that I have to use early game because the air spawn at low tier is very very strong because people don't really have very good climb rate so that extra one kilometer is much more important than that one kilometer at say 6.0 we go up we go horizontal we drop back behind this guy and i notice that he is going way too slow i could have switched targets there no need to do so he is stalled out or well, not stalled out he's going very very slow extremely easy shot and the other guy is still going his merry way behind me but you can tell that he cannot go back up. And you can tell very easily this time with the contrails. He's trying to pitch up. He was trying to go up. And he went horizontal because he fell out of the air. Which means that he doesn't have any energy left. So I can simply go up over him. And pull back behind him. Because there is simply nothing for him here that he can do. Other than dive away, pick up some speed. And then maybe try to reverse me that way. That's completely viable. And that's what he should have done. Now what if you don't have any altitude? I'm going 450 here which is probably faster than him. I can't really tell so I sprayed a little bit of head on. I crit his engine. He hits me a little bit because he fully commits and I have to dodge it. Kind of annoying though. And can tell he doesn't have an engine left. And suddenly his turn rate just ceases to exist. And yes this is not a very high skill uh, example. And I could have easily died there. But I'm showing you that this guy will easily run circles around me. And without an engine... Your turn rate doesn't matter. And it's the exact same principle with all the other fights. And just like this one. He's pitching up straight for me. And he might have an engine. But he doesn't have the altitude or the energy. And it's the exact same thing. Whether you don't have energy. Whether you don't have energy generation. It doesn't really matter. The lower you are for this the better. Because now he can dive away. I'm not sure why he tries to maintain horizontal. But again we're flying at 1.7 here. And most people aren't very aware of what their plane can and can do yet. So I don't want to go head on here. I have a lot more energy. So I just go a little bit to the side. Pitch up. And if he tries to follow this. He simply dies. He can't even follow it. Because he's extremely slow. Even a bf 9 a And that's one of the worst planes in the game. And uh, you don't fly that unless you're new. So I'm terribly sorry for that. But that's just how it is. And here we are again. Another MS-40. 
of 406. Two guys directly below me. I have a lot of altitude. I'm going only 300, but that's fast enough because these guys do not have any energy. As you can tell, he's trying to pitch up for me. Shoot a little bit at range. Brezen connects with the fuel tank. Sets it on fire. Going 550 now. There's no chance in hell he's ever doing that kind of speed here. So I can just loop straight back up. And if he tries to follow this, uh, he's not going to get the, the shot. He doesn't have the energy to pull into me here. He's going to try. But as you can tell, he does not have the energy. He doesn't get his nose on target. He gets set on fire. And he's going to burn up. And here comes the key 10. Another plane, an absolute helicopter of a plane, but he doesn't really have a gun, so I'm not really worried about him. Dodge the head on by simply going straight up and a little bit to the side. Go horizontal, because if I go straight up, he has an easier shot. Horizontal just delay the stall, makes me in control. He's stalling out. We drop the flaps, we start turning, kind of. We don't really start turning because this thing doesn't turn. But you can tell, very easy kill here. And it looks very low effort, and that's because it is. And lastly, we're going to have a full little game. And yes, again, it's at low tier, but I think it gets the point across. Because, well, this is Afghanistan. We start off with some altitude. Everyone starts off with some altitude. Everyone has less engine power here. And something like an uh, air spawn is even more pronounced here. And you can tell that I have a lot of energy on these guys. Because I simply have like one, maybe two, two and a half kilometers on these people. It makes it for a very easy time to take these guys out so now we're going to have to look at some target prioritization which will also link in the description when it's done it's about it's about done so you'll see it very very soon here and the Moko Moraine is one of those planes that is very dangerous later on he's going to be dodging I don't want to commit too hard because I'm going to start turning very badly and I'm going to throw away all my energy he starts diving out and now I'm going to switch my focus on the J20 I'm going very fast here still I just came out of a dive he's still climbing so that's a very big chance that this guy is going to be way too slow to do anything. He certainly is. We shoot his pilot out of the cockpit. And we are going to be looking around again. J11 behind us. Not a very dangerous plane. Moko Moraine below me is pretty dangerous. But he doesn't have the energy to touch me here. And there's another guy on the far left. I can head on this guy for a little bit. Because I just want to get this guy out of the match. He has very bad guns. I crit his engine. And he's going to be going down eventually if he tries to follow me he simply dies so he is out of the fight here he's very badly damaged his engine is completely busted up so if he tries to uh, r to b here he can do that i'm not going to be focusing on him after this pass so even if he survives this which i'm not counting on yeah he does fun isn't it no engine no tail absolutely out of the match he might get stolen but at this point i'm more worried about the win and the other guy at altitude was a bomber. So I'm going to be ignoring him for the most part as well. Gladiator with an oil leak. But he's very close. I can easily kill him without sacrificing too much speed and altitude. Because I have to go down here anyway. Take him down. Throttle back up. Reassess the situation. And look around. Keep looking around. Any examples? No. J-22, extremely strong guns. P-36, good flight performance. And the Mokko Moraine, but he's somewhat damaged. The J-22 presents himself. Very easy shot. Shoot his pilot, yet again, out of the cockpit. Back up we go. Mokko Moraine. He has a leak, he's probably damaged a little bit. He doesn't seem to be completely crippled. But he is not as dangerous as he would be normally. The P-36, however, flies away from me. Making it so that I'm alone with the Mokko Moraine now. If I even pronounce that right, I don't know. And easy kill. So I'm going to be taking this guy out. Get some hits in, get a crit in. Make sure that I don't fly into the ground. And back up we go. Because we want to maintain the speed and altitude. This time he's pulling lead for me. So I go horizontal a little bit. So I bleed less speed and he bleeds even more. Because he has to keep climbing since he's below me. Very energy draining maneuver. And I want to finish this guy here because I don't want him to get back to the airfield or even the AA in the middle of the map. Because the AA at low tier is very, very strong. Just using my MGs here. I don't want to waste my Perez in. Shoot a little bit when he's very, very slow. And yet again get a pilot snipe. Now we got a P-36 which is actually pretty damn dangerous. He has those 50 kills. He has a very good turn rate. And he doesn't really stall out. Making it so that he can basically YOLO after me. 
and uh, kill me that way. And that's something that I don't want to happen. That J11 is still flying around. But no big deal. The P36 isn't very fast however. And I, on the other hand, can build up my speed pretty pretty quickly. So, we have some altitude on him. He's still chasing me. He's still climbing after me. So I go into a little bit of a dive. Just to see if I can extend the distance. Because I'm trying to see if I can equalize the speed. Go faster than him. See that if he's damaged. If he's anything. And on the meantime I'm kind of flying towards the J11. To give him the idea that it's 2v1. He gets hit by AA. And kind of unfortunate. I think it's only an oil leak however. Because his flight performance didn't really change. Uh, but we're on the clock here. So now... I want to kill him as fast as I can because I don't want to kill this guy because he simply doesn't have an engine left. Sure I can do that, but what's the fun in that and it doesn't really teach you anything. So, he's still coming towards me. Now we have quite an energy advantage simply because of the speed as well as altitude. And I'm going to be going straight here. And I do this just to keep up my speed, just to keep up my, my distance so I can use it when he tries to pitch up after me. He's pitching up after me now. And I can go horizontal. But look at that turn rate. Look at that stall. And he's going to be spraying me down with those 50 kills. So I need to take some small evasive actions. Luckily I just had enough energy to the point. Where he didn't get his nose on target. And at those speeds it's very hard for people. To really get your guns on. You don't really have control over your plane. And you're just kind of stalling out at that point. Get a crit in on the wing. And you can tell that he starts lifting to one side. Which is bad for him. He's going to start bleeding even more speed as well. And back up we go. Just a little bit of extension. And we do the same thing. We don't want to turn too tight. Well you can't really turn too tight in this thing. But you don't want to turn fully. Because then he's going to close the gap. So I'm doing a very very shallow turn here. Just to keep up my separation. But still getting some position here. Getting directly above him without him really noticing it. We start dropping back down on him. And he almost pitches up. But you can tell that the energy advantage as well as his damage simply became too much for him. He falls out of the air. Very easy kill. The, the guy I crit at the start is actually going to land in a field just next to the AA. And he's going to be sitting there for the next 15 minutes until the tickets run out. Very enjoyable indeed. Hope you enjoyed the video anyway. And you will see me very soon again with something more top tier-ish on a plane I... Well, it's relatively new and I haven't covered yet.